Hey, my name is Sarah. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video, I'm going to share with you how I made my own custom dress form to my exact body measurements. We're gonna go through that entire process and then I'm gonna share my thoughts and my feelings about it and how I sewed it up, everything like that. If that's something that's interesting to you, stick around and see how I made it. If that's not interesting to you, I don't know why this video got suggested to you, but you can stick around anyway. <laughs> to begin, I went over to bootstrapfashion.com and picked one of their DIY dress form patterns. I'm using this purple one on the very left of the screen. I put in all of my measurements. I actually had my husband help me take some of these measurements. And then I paid the $26 and got it emailed to my desktop. I then printed this out on my home computer and once I had all of those papers I started my timer because I love to time how long projects take me and then I lined up all of the pattern pieces and taped them all together according to their numbers and how they're supposed to be laid out. I got this giant sheet of paper at the end and then I had to cut out every single pattern piece from there. Now I followed the instructions to a T when printing this out at the actual size. It's important not to shrink the fit when you are printing this out on a home computer. Quick note here, instead of ordering my pattern pieces with the seam allowance on them, I would in retrospect order it with just the pattern piece itself. That way when I transfer the pattern piece shape onto my actual fabric, I would get the stitching line that I need. And that is more crucial than the line that I would need to cut out a seam allowance so that I would know exactly where. There's two squirrels fighting outside. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So having the, having the stitching line would be a lot more useful to have rather than the seam allowance line because I could have just added a seam allowance to the pattern piece. Anyway, everything worked out in the end. It was not a big deal. I also made sure to cut very close to these lines or very, very accurate as I knew a mistake here could turn into a mistake later on down the road. I wish it were this easy to cut out all of these pieces. It did take quite a long time. Now it was time to prep my fabric. I had already pre-washed my fabric. I'm using three different kinds. I'm using a linen for the outer fashion layer, the one that you actually see on the outside of the garment, well, the dress form. I'm using a fusible woven interfacing applied to this linen layer to make it a little more stiff and a little stronger and then on top of that i'm also using a tight woven cotton layer on the other side of the of the fusible interfacing so i've got a little sandwich in there with the interfacing in between and then those are the three layers that i'm using as each pattern piece of the fabric here there's also an internal section to this dress form i'm using the same linen and cotton as well as a stabilizer. So just making that a little extra thick and making sure that that stays nice and sturdy on the inside. That'll make a lot more sense as we get on with this video. I'm marking everything here, cutting it all out, making sure that I have all of my pattern pieces laid out before I even think about sewing this project together. I like to make sure that I cut out everything and do a double check here, grabbing all of my pattern pieces, making sure that I actually have everything cut out, making sure that I have the right amount of pieces for each part of my project, and then I can move on from there and begin marking off a few of these very important markers just so I can line up those pattern pieces when the time comes and I can sew them together appropriately. And that is a lot of prep work that goes into making this, but once I get all that done, it is finally time to match up some of these seams and sew them together. First up are the center back and the side back seams. I place the fabric right sides together, which means my linen is touching each other and my cotton is sandwiching all of that in between. And then I sew it all up. 
I'm making sure to match exactly where I need to, remarking things, grabbing my pattern pieces, making sure that everything is set and ready to go. Once I have that all pinned in place, it's time to run it through my sewing machine. And then comes the very important part. So I am clipping into these seams about every inch or so, less than an inch and then I will press them flat. So this clipping allows the seams to stay in their curved shape as our bodies are not straight lines and my body has some very wonderful curves to it. So will my dress form. So you can see that my pattern is wrinkling a little bit there, but that's because when I stuff it full of stuffing, it's gonna have beautiful, wonderful curves to it. Now it's time to sew together the center cup and the side cup of the breasts on the dress form. Now these will be pinned to the lower center fronts. And at this time, I also need to prep the upper center front and upper side front. So that's a lot of fancy words just to say that I am making the front part of this dress form now. I had just sewn the back part together previously, and now it's time to work on the front part. I'm not sewing the center seam yet. I'm just working on each half, the right half and the left half individually, and then we'll sew those two sides together later on. Now, it's very crucial that I make sure that I'm lining all of these things up very precisely as the center of the dress form is what you're gonna look at. <laughs> I mean, all of the dress form matters, but the center is really the show-stopping action right there. So at this time, it's also time to do the upper center front and the upper side fronts together. These are very important because this is actually the top part of the boob up to the collarbone and into the neck. So that's what this piece is showing. And it's very important that I line these up just as I previously said, because this is really a crucial part of making sure that I get an accurate measurement on this dress form and making sure that it comes out looking wonderful. Once I'm done pinning the upper center front and upper side front pieces together, it's time to pin the cups to the lower center front and lower side front that I had previously sewed on this dress form. So this is the place where my belly goes up to my breasts on the dress form and making sure that these cups are in place is quite important. So I'm making sure to pin those nicely together and sew them, clip into the curves, press those seams out, and make sure that I get a nice finished product here. So I've also taken the time to change over my thread to a red thread and use a zigzag stitch to mark out the lower portion of the breast cup there, as you can see with the new red thread. I also take those upper center front and upper side front pieces and I'm going to pin them to the lower center front and lower side front pieces, put that all together and also use my red zigzag stitch to mark out the bust line, the under bust line, the waistline and the hip line. And now I've got four wonderful pieces that I need to sew into a completed dress form. So from here, it's important to line up all of those measurements together as I had just marked out where the bust, waist, under bust, and hip lines are. It makes it quite easy to sew all of those pieces together. I'm first sewing the side pieces together and then we'll start working on the center front and center back as well.
As always, I'm clipping into those curves, making sure that I press all those seam allowances out, and voila! I have almost a complete dress form. I did mess up a little bit on the center front here. I didn't quite match up those two seams, but you know what? Nobody's body's perfect, and my dress form represents that as well. Then it was time to work on the armholes. So here I have just pinned the armhole cover to each of the armholes. I did this before I sewed the center back seam together. It was just easier for me to put this through the machine. The instructions do call for you to sew the center back before you sew the armholes, but in my opinion, it was just seemed a lot easier to do this before I sewed the center back together. I have a lot of trouble sewing curves like this, so it did take me quite a long time and a lot of fiddling with my machine to make sure that everything turned out nice and even. And I did make a couple mistakes on the way, but they're easily fixable if you've got a thread picker and you can undo some of that stitching and redo it and, you know, add a little hand stitching in there as well. Once I had the armhole covers in, it was time for me to sew up the center back, making this one large tube. So I'm just making sure that I line up the bust, waist, and hip measurements, along with any other markers that were on the pattern as well, making sure that I get everything lined up nicely so I can get a nice finished product at the end. Once I have that done, it was time to do the neck hole cover. Now, I made my neck hole cover extra thick because I accidentally cut out two covers instead of just cutting out one of my fabric and I figured I might as well use it. So I've clipped into the neck hole itself after adding the extra piece that gives it the neck and now I'm matching up the center front and the center back and then I'll match up the sides pin that all together and sew it together as well. Now, as I've said before, I'm really not good at sewing in circles, so this did take a lot of fiddling and a lot of time for me to do, but clipping into the neck part itself, allowing that fabric to really stretch around the neck hole cover was quite helpful, and it was a little bit easier for me to sew it all together but it did take quite a lot of fiddling. I finally got most of my pins in and I just took my time with it. You know, sewing doesn't have to be quick. It doesn't have to be the fastest thing you do, but it's something that I enjoy and it's something that I wanted to take the time to do it right and make sure that I had everything done correctly and that I'd be proud of it at the end. Next, it was time to cut out all of the cardboard pieces I needed, so I needed pieces for each of the armholes that will just allow a little more stabilization in the armhole itself, give the shoulder a little more strength in the dress form, and also cut out the base of the dress form. I'm also making sure to mark all of these special markings here because there is a right armhole and a left armhole, and they are supposed to line up very precisely within your dress form. Cutting out cardboard is definitely not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> and it did take a little bit of extra time, but if you've got some extra shipping boxes laying around, it's a good way to put those to use.
I did make the mistake of sewing my armhole covers all the way around before adding the cardboard inserts. So right now I'm just adding, cutting out an extra piece of my linen fabric here so I can give my cardboard something to sit inside when it's being put into the armhole. So I'm just cutting out two more of these covers, one for the left arm and one for the right arm so I can add my cardboard to my dress form. This probably would have been easier with scissors, but I got this new tool that I really like to use and I'm slightly obsessed with it and I can't put it down. So <laughs> there you have it. Now I've sewed only half of this armhole cover on, then I get to insert that cardboard piece and sew up the rest of this cover. I'm using a zipper foot for this because using a regular foot in your machine, it's going to be very hard to be able to sew all the way around here. A zipper foot will just allow me to get closer to that cardboard as I need to and make sure that I can get those stitches in there nicely and, and all of the way around there without running into the cardboard and breaking a needle. Now, as I've said, I'm really not that good at sewing in small tight circles, so I ended up hand sewing the rest of this. I did try to put it through my machine, but you know what, it wasn't working. And <laughs> a little hand stitching on the inside of this dress form isn't gonna bother anyone. It's not gonna show, it's not gonna affect the structural integrity whatsoever of this dress form. And I quite enjoy hand sewing. This is pretty sloppy work, but as I said, nobody's gonna see it. Actually, the entire internet can see it, but <laughs> nobody, nobody's gotta know. That's just between you and me, okay? Just between you and me. So once I had that done, I had a nice and sturdy armhole. And it's not perfect, but it, it works out nicely. And when you turn it on over to the, to the other side, the side that'll actually show, I think it looks pretty darn good. Now it was time to do the other one. <laughs> And I'm about nine hours and 48 minutes into this dress form. And that is including taking breaks and all of that. I start and stop the timer when I'm working, etc., etc. So I've got the internal sewn together as well. As I said, this dress form does have an internal stabilizing layer to it. And this is where the post itself will go into in the middle there. And then the front and the back will be attached. So that's the front side there that will be attached. And then the back um, will be attached there. I'm making sure that my PVC pipe fits inside here. Now I don't have a dress stand or anything like that. I've actually decided to use a PVC pipe, some instant concrete, and an empty paint bucket as my base for this dress stand. And you know what? It works really well and it didn't cost a lot of money. I added some nice decorative rocks into the paint can as well and, and it looks, look, it looks, it looks really cool. Okay, don't at me on that one. Once I had everything sewn together, I made sure that the PVC pipe did in fact fit inside this fabric here, making sure that it can move around a little bit, but then it's not going to rock back and forth in any way. Once that was done, the instructions asked me to cut into this bottom layer here. Now, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't cut into this again, um, this is actually going to come out of the base of the dress form and you're supposed to glue it to the cardboard base that you cut out and then put inside here. But I just found that these really got in the way and if you're going to create a dress form like this, I probably would just either cut that off or leave it. It really didn't matter for the dress form structural integrity or anything like that. 
So once I have that internal layer all done, it is time to fold my piece exactly in half. So I've got one shoulder facing down, one shoulder facing up, the front side facing towards me and the back side facing away from me. Then I had to pin the inner layer, the stabilizing layer that's going to hold the PVC pipe to the dress form itself. Now, the instructions on this were very clear to say that the seams should line up. So the, the seam allowance, you're not just gonna pin this like any other seam allowance. You want them to kiss each other, right? So you want one side of the seam on the stabilizing layer to pinch one side of the seam on the front part. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm making sure that I'm splitting that seam open and then getting in there to make sure that I line those up together. Now it was time to stuff the neck itself and you're supposed to have like a three inch sponge, but I don't have a sponge so, and I don't wanna go to the store, so I'm just using some extra bra cups that I had laying around and I figured I'd cut these into a circle and then I could sew them together and stuff these with some polyfill and that would be almost like having a sponge. And you know what? It was actually working out really nice. So I'm trying to create like a cylinder here and I've just taken some like super basic fabric. It's actually just a layer of stabilizer and these, these two bra cups and I've sewn them together, left a little hole, which I'm going to stuff some polyfill in there and then I'll have what is like a sponge in my eyes and it took a lot of polyfill to go into this and I probably would just go back to the store and get a regular sponge but it was late the store wasn't open and I wanted to keep moving along with this project so I sewed that all together and back to my favorite part of sloppily hand sewing the ends back together because how the heck was I going to get this under my sewing machine foot? The answer is I wasn't. I wasn't going to get this under my sewing machine foot. And to be honest, I probably didn't need to sew the rest of this because it's just going to get stuffed into the dress form anyway. But I did. I did sew it. So here's some video of me doing that. So once I had that done, I tested it into the neck of my dress form here. And you know what? It worked exactly like a sponge and I didn't have to go to the store to get a sponge. The whole purpose of not filling this up with cardboard is because you want to be able to stick your pins or your needles up into the neck without having them flop around or fall out or go all the way through the fabric. And this extra layer in here with all the polyfill stuffed up in there is really going to allow it to stay in the neck area itself and allow me to put those pins in as I'm working on draping a garment or working on tailoring something on this dress form. After that was done, it was time to sew up the base. So this part is the base cover. This will go on the underside of the dress form and I needed to pick out some zippers for it. Now I went to a garage sale a couple weeks ago and this lady was selling an entire box of zippers for $2. So I took her up on the offer and now I have a ton of zippers. But the problem is now I have a ton of zippers and I took forever to choose the right zippers that I wanted. Now I chose a length of about uh, seven to nine inches on a zipper. I didn't want to use an extra long one just because those take a lot more obviously and I'd have to cut them and that would be sort of useless. So then I was trying to decide, do I want a white zipper? Do I want to use a blue zipper? And then I wanted to have a matching pair of zippers. So I was looking through my zipper stash to find a matching pair of zippers. And you know what? I did. I'm gonna use these blue ones because I think they look really fun and the white ones, I didn't have a lot of them. So 
I put those back, picked the blue ones, and got on with the project. I don't know about you, but I love zipper packaging. I think it's absolutely wonderful. It just, it makes me so happy. Okay, so I sewed up the zippers, made a couple mistakes. It's a little bit wrinkly, but you know what? It is the bottom of the dress form. It doesn't have anything to do with the measurements of the dress form, so I was not worried about it. I trimmed those zippers to length as those are going to get sewn into the dress form. And here I am doing that, sewing the base onto this dress form, eagerly anticipating the time that I actually get to stuff this full of stuffing because we are coming up on the very, very last steps of sewing this all together. Now polyfill is very expensive, but you know what's not expensive? Walmart pillows. Walmart pillows are not that expensive, so I have purchased those. I'm gonna cut those open and use the stuffing from inside those to stuff my dress form. I had a lot of fun cutting into these pillows. I actually think that I can use the pillow fabric itself for something else, like a small project. It was actually nice quality cotton that was surrounding these pillows, but I cut off the end, I took out the fluff from inside, and this is what the inside of a cheap pillow looks like. It is literally just batting material. And I'm gonna take this and I'm going to shove it inside my dress form with the pole inside it, okay? I went back and restuffed this dress form a couple times adding more stuffing without the pole inside it. And let me tell you, you need to have whatever pole you're going to have inserted into this dress form before you stuff it full of material. Because if you do it after, it's going to be a pain in the butt to put it back on the pole because that inside layer that holds your pole is gonna get all squished and it's gonna be really, really difficult to insert it back into your dress form. So just put the pole in. I'm making sure that I'm stuffing this in small increments and pulling apart that fluff as I go because I don't want this to be lumpy. And pulling all of this fluff apart is going to allow me to make sure that I don't have any lumps inside my dress form. I'm then checking the measurements here and it's pretty easy to stick your hand in there and move around a lot of that internal fluff that you have checking those measurements again and then making sure that it all lines up. Now, it's, it's easy if your measurements are smaller than they should be because you can just add more fluff and expand the fabric. But if your measurements are larger than they should be, then <laughs> it'll be really hard to get back in there and re-sew the entire dress form to make your measurements smaller. After I got that stuffed, it was time to add my cardboard base here and move it around the, the base layer here. Now my cardboard did get a little bit bendy, but it really doesn't matter that much because this is the bottom of the dress form. Um, this is really just to hold all that stuffing in, in place, and it doesn't 
bulge out anywhere or come out the bottom in any way. And then you can zip up those zippers and stuff in any extra stuffing that you have coming out. And then you really have a completed dress form. That was the last step. It took me 16 hours and 49 minutes of work to complete this. And there you have it. My pull is a little long, that's why it doesn't really match my height, but I do cut that later on and make sure that I have it all together. The hips are a little bit bulgy, but when you take the measurement all the way around, it, it really does come out quite nice. Okay, let's talk about overall thoughts of the dress form. So I, I do like it after I restuffed it with a couple more pillows. It's a lot uh, more firm than it was when I originally showed just on the video earlier. Um, the measurements are nice. The boobs themselves, I could be like a little larger. Like I'm wearing a sports bra now, but I have an undercup, right? So I have like a shelf here and the boobs aren't really able to do that. And then with the hip measurement, again, my hips are not that wide. So the low hip measurement that I made really came with a lot of the butt area and I couldn't specify that that's what I wanted on the dress form itself. So having the curve here and then the butt measurement the dress form itself doesn't have that much of a curve, although I could specify I wanted a plumper butt on the measurement. Overall, it's cool. I don't have anything to compare this to though. I don't have a different dress form than I've used before. I don't have, I've never used a dress form. I just thought maybe for my first one I would, I would do it right and I would, I would get this one and I would make it myself and I would really love it. And, and I think I do like it, but I haven't done anything with it yet. So I can't, I can't say if it's the best ever. Um, dressing the dress form is pretty easy. I, I did make this really cute chemise underlayer to wear underneath some of the corsets I have and that I'm going to make. And it's, it's pretty good. It looks cool that I can try on garments without trying on garments and like see how they look. Uh, and then for the base, I didn't have anything to use as a nice base, so I'm actually using an old paint bucket that I filled with concrete and rocks, and I painted my PVC pipe as well. So it works out really nice. It's quite sturdy, and I can move it around as I need to. Overall, this is a very lower angle than what I originally started with, but it's good.